would like to mention before we go on an exhibit that I don't think is up anymore, and that's the student exhibit. Um, Missy Delahanty and I went in during the student exhibit, and it's just such an exciting exhibit, and it happens annually, so people can look forward to it, mm -hmm. and so can the children and the art teachers. Mm -hmm. um, Rutland High School had an amazing uh, AP uh, blocks of marble, it looked like, with different faces. Fair Haven High School nearby had many, many pictures of different kinds. Obviously, um, Kristen Partizzi chose to show the diversity of output of her students. Exactly. And Fred Lauer of Rutland High School decided to show what they had all done together as mm -hmm. a group. Mm -hmm. um, West Rutland had the love sculpture, L-O-V-E, which you see in Philadelphia and different cities. Yes. Um, and it was large. It was, it, it was very like what you see if you're in the city and all of a sudden you come upon it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the self-portraits done by the Rutland Intermediate School, uh, Debbie Dauphiné was the teacher. I, I just got such a kick out of it. Um, obviously, she had trained them to do their own individual style. And um, down in Clarendon, there was a large mural of, done by first and second graders uh, of winter. Mm -hmm. and. Claire had them pose for each other before they each did this little cutout section that, that go on this monstrous piece of light blue uh, paper. And, and I've just mentioned a few. I mean, I could go on and on, but that's enough. But I think the student exhibit is so exciting, and because it happens once a year, it's worth mentioning. They don't even it. recognize that. They, they think, oh, well, you know, I have to get a lawyer. Sure. Right, well, absolutely. You, it feels you don't like it would be a legal to, document. Yeah. yeah, you absolutely don't have to get a lawyer involved at all. This is, this, these are your wishes, and it's being documented that way. Um, and I just totally got sidetracked, and I forgot. You oh, were, the presentation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I go out and I, I do presentations, and um, one of the things that I'll, I'll bring up, I'll try and bring up examples. So mm -hmm. sometimes people can make that recognition. Sure. And um, Terry Scheival was a story of a young lady who had something happen to her. Absolutely. And she was left on life support, and she had a feeding tube. Yeah. Um, she wasn't brain dead, but there was enough damage where she was never going to be able to recover. Absolutely. For years and years, it went back and forth between the husband and the family. The husband said, no, she didn't want to live like this. The family said, yes, she did want to live right. like this. And who knows how, what her wishes were. We also, were. three years ago, moved our children into our chaplain ab site and began our capital campaign. So we are in the final months of our capital campaign. We've raised all together for this entire project about $1.3 million. And we still have about 150000 left to raise. How you feel about that? How you know, she's now downstairs in yes. the bedroom, and is that easier? Do you worry when you go to bed at night? Oh, no. Um, well, sometimes I do because she won't turn the TV off, and I have monitors. I have one downstairs and one on our, my nightstand, and sometimes I can still hear her. Oh, she's singing, or she's talking, or she's, you know, Oh, watching TV, and I'll have to go down. And I finally came to the conclusion. I just said, Mom, when you're when you think you're falling asleep, you take your glasses off, turn the TV off too. And I, because we have an air conditioner and a fan in there, I, whenever she turns it off, I'm not really conscious of it now, and it makes it easier for me because I can't go back to sleep sometimes, <laughs> wondering what she's doing. But being upstairs was hard for her to to do the stairs. Um, and we were afraid she'd fall down in our house. Is, our stairway isn't set up so you could put one of those easy glides or whatever mm -hmm. they're called. So we took the, the kid's den and made a bedroom and the upstairs bedroom became the man cave. <laughs> so, and the girls are allowed, but you know, whenever they feel like it. Well, I think you need to clarify that. It's the man cave for your grandchildren. Not Faithfully, is our superintendent of schools at the finish line, Mary, Mary Moran. Moran. And she even pulled me aside one time a couple of years ago. She said, I can remember many years ago, I saw you run at Boston. I said, well, where were you, Mary, at Fen uh, Fenway or Kenmore Square? And she couldn't remember the exact spot. Yeah. But, so it clicked a little with her, but she does a great job. I mean, there's so much going yeah. on at the finish line every year. Too. I know. She enjoys that. And basically, 
that's her race. That's right. <laughs> Downtown oh, that's great. is her it's race. She controls it. it and she has a good time and we mm -hmm. really appreciate her stepping up to the plate mm -hmm. and doing that part of the race for us because um, she really, she, actually she does a great job. She starts the children's race and everything. And she was, the first year Bill came in, she was so excited because oh, sure. he's from down there, sure. you know, and yeah. it's her area. So that was Hello and welcome to a special edition of SBCOA Today. I'm your host, Heather Baker, and today we're on location at a very special senior center, the Young at Heart Senior Center here in Pulteney, where they're celebrating their 40th anniversary. Today I'm gonna to speak with Executive Director, Kathy Hudson, as well as a few of the many volunteers who help make this organization a success, including Meals on Wheels delivery drivers, cooks, and thrift shop workers. Hi, Kathy. Hello, Welcome Heather. to SBCOA Today. Thank you. So, I'm Major Chuck Balcom from the Salvation Army. I'm Major Rose Balcom from the Salvation Army. And we want to welcome you. Hello. How are you? My name is Andrea Taravella. Welcome to my show, Bocconcini di Vino. Today I'm preparing a nice uh, pasta with uh, alla norma. It's a uh, pasta with tomato, uh, egg plain, fried egg plain, and ricotta salata, salt ricotta. This enormous uh, is a famous uh, opera from uh, Vincenzo Bellini from Sicily. So one of the chefs uh, gave his name, this uh, recipe to La Norma, it's famous in Sicily. So I started preparing the uh, uh, onions, chopped with onions, very fine. Make sure I'm not cutting my finger. Cooked. I have pre-cooked some stuff since we don't have a grill here. So we have some of the Parmesan potatoes and a blue cheeseburger already cooked. So now what we are going to do is get the honey mayonnaise right. on the bottom part of the bun. Spread that around. Or even roasted almonds, that little brown skin. An almond meal is the whole thing. So it's actually even a, you know, it's a better ramped up, healthier version than almond mm -hmm. flour for anyone who has gluten-free issues. So almond meal here in the bowl. Just need to get myself a little spatula. In is going to go all of the other ingredients. So in goes a little bit of oil. And is it canola oil? This is canola oil that mm -hmm. I've used. So you could use canola or safflower oil. Um, Canola and olive oil are the two healthiest they ones to are chime the two in on healthiest that. Oil. That is Tales of hunting and fishing on this show. Um, another thing that comes to mind, you brought up a good point that sometimes people will panic. Even if you had the belt on, you're still going to get some of the water into your waders. Oh yeah. Right? yeah so you, did. you don't want to push the panic button on that, no. even though you're in fairly cold water. And I was fortunate, I picked a diagonal. I went mm -hmm. with the current and still made my way. So, yeah. Yeah. And I saved the fly rod. Oh, <laughs> it was it was <laughs> like a good uh, retriever. Yeah. First of all, I'd like to introduce you to two of my staff members. To my immediate right is Bridget Martin, who is our educational advisor. And to her right is my office manager, Nancy Connor. So Nancy, I'd like to start off um, when a student called... Welcome to The Informer. I'm Chelsea Tice, and here are some stories you may have missed this week. The Rutland Town Select Board voted unanimously to reject a petition regarding refugee resettlement. Town resident Don Chaffee presented the petition, which seeks to de deny the refugee resettlement in Rutland City, to the Rutland Town Select Board Tuesday night.
Hello, and welcome to another chapter of the traditions of a Vermont Ridge Runner. Hi, I'm Amy Lewis, and welcome to 30 Minute Fitness. Welcome to the July. Oh my gosh, it's like scary to say going. that month already. Mm -hmm. Yikes. Welcome to Home Care Connection, brought to you by the Rutland Area Visiting Nurse Association and Hospice. Welcome to Home Care Connection, brought to you by the Rutland Area VNA and Hospice. At RAFNA, we provide a wide range of services that help people remain safe and in their homes and independent and active as possible. While we are well known for our visiting nurses, we provide much more than nursing services. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at our therapy programs. Uh, specifically, we will be talking about physical therapy and occupational therapy. With us today are some of Ravna's therapy staff. Kathy Rotundo, who's a physical therapist, and Melissa. Welcome to Home Care Connection, brought to you by the Rutland Area Visiting Nurse Association and Hospice. Today, we're talking about the very important but very sensitive topic of end-of-life planning. And here to help me with that today is Mark Mealy from Ravna's Community Relations Department. Thank you for joining me today, Mark. 